This is how loud I can yell. First and best horse love. Sometimes you were my sanity. Oftentimes I was your scratching post. And to James, that's you, there's no telling how many books I've read to you. Move slowly and gently and gingerly too. To say hi to a horse, this is what you should do. Reach out a hand and keep your palm down. The horse needs to smell you. There's no particular place to go, just pastures you want to see. You're on your favorite horse's back, and it's as bare as it can be. There's no need for the saddle. What's a bridle going to do? Remember, there's a trust so deep, and it's between the two of you. for a little bit. I think I is just here where I can experience life. Sometimes I go outside and play. Sometimes I go in the studio and work and play. Well, we make pottery. My dad has a studio that he makes pottery in. They pretty good. They do all kinds of different cool stuff that I like. My mom makes water books. She has a book room where she makes them a studio. When I was a kid, I told my parents that I was going to be a writer, which then when I was a teenager, that seemed very strange, like almost like, who is this person that said they were going to be a writer? She doesn't have anything to write about. I cut out one little horse, and that little horse sat in my studio space for a long time, and, but I was kind of hesitant to put it on a book cover for some reason. But when I did, the whole thing kind of like clicked together. I'll, in my life today, smell certain things and it's like I go right back to my grandfather's house or back to something. And, and that's true of, you know, different smells for different people. But what's very true for horse people, and it's like you're born this way. You're born liking that smell. All these paths I've gone down kind of all collided into this one piece of work. person um, well clay is pretty personal it can be um, intimate uh, if you think about sitting down at a meal with a plate someone's made or little characteristics that it might have that uh, the maker has left behind and you visually see the color and and, and clay can be um, a very very personal thing like that dug it out of the ground, you know. If you've ever had a life experience where you were able to love something enough to lose track of time, well, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I, I experienced that when I was a, a young child working with um, model cars. That was a, a way, an opportunity my parents gave me to put together the model cars. Uh, little plastic things, a million little parts and pieces, and you'd take a uh, 
a cement glue and glue them together and you, you could get totally lost in that. You were listening to my mom and dad speaking, and I'm my son, and I like Legos. It's pretty nice being with Legos because the ideas never end. You can have more thoughts, and you don't even need to just get set. There's millions of other thoughts that you can build. You can build your own kind of thing, different from everybody else's. You can hear me? Everybody else's. There's hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of people out in the world. So, you could build something that's different from all of us, right? Kind of going off, I like what James said about the mind and ideas. And art really is a way of bringing those ideas to life. And there's not a road map and there's lots of vehicles in which you can bring those ideas to life. Some people paint, some people make videos, some people write, some people build things. But the amazing thing, when it becomes art, is when you share that with someone else and they get it. Because you're saying something to their story, something that resonates with them. And I think that's when it really becomes art. Whether it's you make a pot that someone uses for a lifetime and they fill that pot with all the memories that they've lived with that pot. Music that will take you back to a place that you've been 10 years ago. Even just the conversations you might have with someone about a piece that they bought last year. They use it three times a day and wash it by hand. Broke a handle off the mug and the coffee, when I drink coffee out of your mug, the coffee tastes better or the milk tastes better. And I, I have the same feeling. For some reason, the, the coffee is better out of a handmade mug. I like the home as the gallery. You go into the kitchen and you love living with your pots and you know the person personally who made it or you took a class with that person that helped you build a teapot better. It's a collection of a lifetime of experiences that we use every day and we get to enjoy. Put it on the table. Make the table pretty. Jewelry for the table, as Justine might say. My idea for this is that it would be a children's book, even though the content is pretty quiet and maybe a little bit deep, but we love pots. Anyways, pottery is quite nice. Pottery can help make a house a home, the home, a living gallery. Pots live on shelves, they visit tables and hang on walls. Pots rest on window sills. You might have just one pot and that can be grand. Use it three times a day, so you wash it by hand. Pottery is nice to set a table with. A chorus of voices come together. Be it an everyday meal or a special gathering, pottery is jewelry for the kitchen. The pots on the shelves, they squeeze in tight, like passengers on the subway, rush hour. But the pots aren't going anywhere, they are waiting waiting for their chance to be filled, to be used, to be of service. The making of the pots mimics the making of food. The studio, the kitchen. Wedging the clay, kneading the dough. Make the coils, roll the pastries. Fire the pot, bake the bread. Both are forever changed. Living with pots is about living with people. The maker of the pots, the potter, she tends to be humble. Often her hands are covered with the earth, dirty, muddy, centered, formed. Oftentimes, the wet clay, still very plastic, makes the potter forget about time. The minute feels like the hour, waiting and wondering in anticipation. What will the kiln's belly behold? 
The potter breathes failure. He moves quickly through broken, fractured, poorly glazed, and S-cracked pots. The beauties, the eye-catchers, the stunners, these pots all have their piles of failures holding them up. Vessels holding vessels, filling up shelves, shelves of memories, memories of pots. Pottery is about community. The clay body, generous, giving, kind. We hold each other's histories.